in this lecture we will be discussing about the xrd technique which is the fifth module of the paper experimental techniques at calicut university so as the basics of xrd technique let us first discuss about lattice planes and bragg's law so actually law was the first person to explain or to propose a model for this x-ray diffraction where he proposed that the wave uh, wavefronts from all the planes or from the crystal is superimposing with each other or inter uh, undergoing interference that is constructive or destructive interference that is why we are getting such peaks at some specified portions it was very a complicated picture or complicated model that he proposed which was simplified by bragg approximations or bragg's concepts so here the two braggs lorenz bragg and william bragg simplified the picture by considering these diffractions as reflections from atomic planes okay that means the waves are being reflected back from the crystal and the cause of reflection is atomic planes it is planes containing atoms so instead of considering the constructive and uh, destructive interferences we need only to consider the reflections which is much more simpler picture and they proposed the famous equation n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta where n is the order of reflection and lambda is the wavelength of the xrd used d or dhkl usually denoted as dhkl which is the interplanar distance having miller indices h k and l and theta is the angle of diffraction so considering this statement we can say the bragg equation is actually a negative statement Okay, the famous Bragg equation is a negative statement, which means if Bragg equation is not satisfied, if this condition is not satisfied, there won't be any reflection. That means there is no reflection will be occurring. But if it is success, uh, satisfied or if it is or uh, obeyed, the condition is achieved, the reflection may occur. That means there is no surety that. Uh, the country all the peaks which are obeying this Bragg's equation will be present in the XRD spectrum and that's why we say it as a negative statement if it is not satisfied we are sure that the peak will not appear in the XRD spectra but if it is satisfied that means if Bragg's equation is satisfied even though it is satisfied there is a possibility that that reflection may occur or that peak may appear in the xrd pattern and accordingly the bragg's law states that the diffracted beam appears to be specularly reflected from a set of crystal lattice planes with angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection okay that's what the bragg's picture says that is the diffraction is actually or can be considered as the specular reflection from set of crystal lattice planes that is Bragg's law so once again considering the Bragg's equation that is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta where lambda is uh, suffixed as copper k alpha that means here the equation is written for k alpha lines of or k alpha x-rays of copper that means the source is copper atoms or copper uh, target is used to produce x-rays so anyway n times or n lambda copper uh, k alpha is equal to 2 d h k l sin theta h k l that means d as well as theta is actually depending on h k l values that is miller indices or it actually depends on the lattice planes so theta is the angle between incident x-rays and uh, the set of parallel atomic planes okay and also one more thing where the red letter pyramid that is n 
n is called the order of reflection so actually we can say the nth order reflection from hkl plane is considered as first order from nh nk nl right so nth order reflection from hkl plane is usually referred as n uh, first order reflection from nh nk nl so actually n is the multiplier of hkl planes or hkl indices right the common uh, multiplier of miller indices that is the n so we can actually remodify our equation as lambda is equal to 2d nh nk nk sin theta nh nk nl so the suffix suggests that theta hkl and theta nh nk nl are entirely different right so the nth order from hkl is same as first order from nh nk nl this equation is derived on the basis of this d spacing equations were 1 by d spacing or interplanar distance is equal to h square by a square plus k square by b square plus l square by c square this is the most general form for finding out the d or interplanar distance but for a cubic crystal the lattice parameters a equal to b equal to c so we usually take it as a for all three things right so we can say for a cubic crystal the equations will be written like this so for d h k l it will be a by h square plus k square plus l square root of then for n h n k n l or d n h n uh, n k n l that is represented like this so we can conclude that d n k n h n l is equal to d h k l by n so in this equation if n is taken to the other side we will be getting d h k l divided by n so which can be written as d n h n k n n l right so this equation is utilized here or used to write this or rewrite this equation so this is an alternate way of writing the bracks equation okay so next let us consider again what can change the pattern so here the presence of additional atoms or ions or molecules in the uc uc refers for unit cell right so if additional atoms are present in unit cell or these atoms can be at uh, the lattice points or the correct uh, corners or face centers or edge centers or body center or it can be as the part of motif right the motif of a lattice so these two can alter the intensities of some of the reflections right so we'll be getting so many pattern or peaks in the xrd spectrum and due to the presence of uh, additional atoms or ions or something additional quantities at lattice points or as part of the motif they might alter the pattern right altering means some of the reflections may go missing right so this is the point where we said that uh, even though the bracks condition is achieved there might be a chance of occurring the reflection so some reflections may go missing due to the presence of additional atoms or we also say that lattice centering so the presence of additional planes or additional atoms at these spaces are also called lattice lattice centering okay so motif so this is the word motif which means that the crystal structure is unique arrangement of atoms molecules and ions it is composed of motif which is a set of atoms arranged in a particular way and a lattice lattice means the matrix of the crystal and motif is the atomic part or the com uh, quantity of atoms or matter at each lattice point so motifs are located upon the points of lattice right so it is somewhat similar to basis so lattice plus motif gives the crystal right 
so actually it is an array of uh, we see it is an array of particles or it is the arrangement of atoms or molecules inside a crystal structure that is referred as the motif okay so the motif are located upon the points of lattice and again the altering arises because that means already we said that the presence of additional atoms or quantities at lattice points of or uh, and as a part of the motif can change or alter the pattern or alter the result of XRD right so this altering arises because the centering leads to destructive interference for some reflections and the missing reflections are known as systematic absences okay so we said that the presence of additional points in the lattice or in the motif is called lattice centering and this lattice centering leads to destructive interference between the consecutive planes so due to the destructive interference from the, uh, the for the waves for from the consecutive planes we get systematic absences which are the missing reflections and again one more uh, quantity which is affecting the pattern is translational symmetry elements so symmetry elements of a crystal are, are also causes these destructive interferences and again the effect of glide planes okay crystal defects or glide planes are also caused for this uh, missing or systematic absences next we will discuss about the single crystal diffraction so as you can see in the figure a crystal structure or a solid film or some surface it might be as form of mono crystalline structure which means throughout the layer same crystal structure is being maintained or in the second case it might be a polycrystalline material which means there might be domains or parts of a crystal which are obeying or part different parts will be uh, oriented in different structural units okay so many structural units are combined together to form a big solid so there will be uh, different types of crystal structures at different areas of this crystal and the third category or third picture represents amorphous material where the structure inside this or arrangement of atoms or structure inside the crystal or not crystal actually inside the material will not be having any particular crystal structure the atoms will be just randomly arranged so as to form the solid so these three can be analyzed using this single crystal diffraction okay so the solid material is directly placed in the uh, diffractometer that is instrument for measuring the peak so the material is directly placed inside the diffractometer and the xrd analysis is, is done so the single crystal diffraction is actually accurate and rapid measurement of the position and intensity of the hkl reflections right so using a single crystal x-ray diffraction we can accurately and rapidly measure the peak reflections next one it is the demerit one uh, of this single crystal diffraction and that is it cannot record the phase change of this x-ray that is being reflected back or which is undergoing this xrd x-ray diffraction right so there is no uh, equipment available for recording the phase of or phase change that happening to the x-rays due to the presence of the crystal okay so which is actually uh, very informative about the positions of atoms and electron clouds around atom so it is not actually possible in this single crystal diffraction next intensity is proportional to the square so we will be getting the intensity of reflected x-rays and which is proportional to the square of its amplitude and so that the phase part or phase indicating part is actually lost during the recording right so the atomic positions and densities are actually 
uh, the information about some questions can be derived from this face informations next is if back angle of the reflections are measured and indexed the size of the unit cell inf and information on translational symmetry elements and symmetry informations are obtained right so we can uh, perform the xrd analysis on a solid and the obtained pattern can be analyzed for getting the information on all these things that is the size of the unit cell and volume of uh, the primitive cells and information of symmetry elements and symmetry informations right which kind of symmetry elements are there so we already uh, pointed that presence of symmetry elements may cause missing of some reflection or some uh, missing of some reflections so by uh, proper analysis we can define which kind of symmetry element is present inside the crystal right and finally the intensities and positions of the reflections are different and these can be quantified using a detector or a ccd plate ccd means charge coupled device ccd plate or scintillation counter or it can be even recorded electronically right so during an xrd analysis of a solid that can be or solid crystal that can be recorded using all these methods okay next is powder diffraction which is another method for diffraction that is in the previous method that is crystal method we used the bulk material itself as the sample but in this we will be uh, grinding the sample into very fine powder and that very fine powder will be uh, filled inside a special plate or as you can see here we will be using a razor blade or a glass plate which to uh, use to wipe off the excess powder and a uniform thick uh, disc of this powder will be obtained on the non x-ray reactant plate okay that is actually called dye so on the dye we will be getting a uniformly thick uh, layer of powder and excess powder is being wiped off using a very sharp uh, edged object like razor blades or glass blades and this sample is being placed in the diffractometer so when x-ray falls onto this diffractometer or this sample uh, the powder inside this crystal uh, inside the dye will be oriented randomly which means a powder may be composed uh, this in the case of powder diffraction that is composed of many large number of crystallites which are finely ground crystals okay and these crystallites will be oriented randomly to one another that means the orientation of uh, each and every granules will be independent of each other so that the total arrangement will be in complete random so if x-ray falls onto this uh, the average behavior of that particular material is obtained because all the possible crystallites will be mixed together within the sample and if x-ray falls onto that to be falling on to many number of granules in there so that each and every granule might be representing different different uh, crystal structures so the average behavior of that particular material can be obtained that is what we do in this powder diffraction so the diffracted beam makes an angle of 2 theta with the incident beam so we will be recording intensity versus 2 theta so 2 theta will be on the horizontal axis and intensity will be along the vertical axis right so next we will get on to comparison between powder xrd as well as uh, with, with the crystal xrd so considering powder we will be getting the bulk material behavior because uh, different different granules will be representing each and every possible crystal structure for the particular material but at the same time in the case of crystal xrd a very few uh, types of crystallites will be exposed to the xrd so that a particular crystal structure uh, may be studied 
and here powder xrd can differentiate between fine grained and mixed grained materials right the grain size can be calculated from this and here the crystal structure the crystalline and polyextrine and amorphous material can be uh, phases can be uh, differentiated and both the things are uh, actually the powder diffraction is very rapid and powerful because a single uh, exposure to X XRD or X-rays can expose all the possible crystallized structures inside the material. But the other one that is single crystal XRD is a relatively slower process because it needs to be rotated for to get or to get all the possible information. And the powder XRD data are unambiguous without any uh, doubts. So unambiguous mineral determination. So they are mainly applied for uh, remove the ambiguity. At the same time, the crystal XRD is superior in the analysis of unknown materials. And uh, in the case of powder XRD, we need only a minimal uh, sample preparation work. That means the material has to be finely powdered. Okay, the material has to be finely grinded and that powder can be used for this one. So, no particular or uh, extra care to be taken while grinding the material. Only care is to be taken for, uh, is that the heating of the powder should be controlled. At the same time, in the case of uh, crystal XRD, the preparation of crystal is very tedious process or very time consuming process. Okay, so considering the work, Actually, the last point is valid, that is fine grinding as well as growing the single crystal, both are very tedious works, but still, this one is very simple in the case of the, its accessories. We need to only control the temperature, but in this case, we need many factors for the proper crystal growth. And powder XRD is superior to crystal XRD in the case of MDL, minimum detection limit, that is the least amount of the uh, element in the sample which can be detected. So MDL is about 2 percentage for the powder XRD. At the same time, it is much larger for crystal XRD. Right? So this is a rough comparison between powder XRD as well and uh, crystal XRD. So next, let us go for the instrumentation. That is how we can record this XRD or X-ray diffraction pattern. So this is uh, the experiment or the apparatus shown in this picture is called Debye Shearer camera. Okay, Debye Shearer camera, where we use a circular photographic strip with two holes in it. One is for uh, letting in the X-rays and other for exit of X-rays. So these ports are called inlet port, which uh, lets in the X-rays. And the, on the other side, diametrically opposite side, we will be having an exit port, which will be uh, used for uh, exiting the X-rays. So these X-rays will uh, hit on or fall onto this sample placed at the center of this circle. So the sample might be powder, crystal or some anything. It might be a thin filling. Uh, uh, all the samples are accepted. So it falls onto that uh, target or sample and the planes inside this sample diffracts or reflects them in different angles. So as you can see here, this and this actually are same uh, thing. Because after this diffraction from the sample, this uh, diffracted ray will be moving in the form of cones. Okay, circular cones. So the base of circular cone actually makes a circle on this photographic plates since it is a strip we will be getting only these two arcs on the sample, uh, photographic plates so different uh, rays scattered at or diffracted at different angles will be creating different different arcs on this uh, photographic plate so this is the instrumentation of Debye Shearer camera so there is a sample holder and a circular photographic plate okay so here back uh, diffraction is also accounted and we will get a uh, spectrum like this so we will be having two holes in the photographic plate which are inlet and exit port and we will be getting circular rings with these holes as center right 
so we'll be getting uh, lines on both the sides because forward diffraction as well as backward diffraction might occur and as a result we will be getting circular arcs on both uh, sides of this photographic place both uh, halls of this photographic plate right and the Bayer camera is an old structure nowadays we are using most modern x-ray diffractometers which will be looking like this and a schematic is given for reference so there is a provision for uh, incident x-rays or something will be there to make the x-ray so x-ray generator will be there and a sample holder is placed at the center of this ring so here we will be having the sample which will be attached with this stem of this uh, diffractometer and on directly opposite side we will be having beam trap that is the beam which is passing through uh, the sample without any interaction will be captured by this beam trap right and there are three types of rotations possible for this crystal the stem itself can be rotated with its own axis that is called uh, phi rotation and the ring again can be rotated with its plane or along its plane with its uh, axis passing through its center that is called chi rotation the angle is denoted as chi so the circle itself can be rotated and finally it will be uh, the circle can be rotated with along an axis which is passing through its diameter or vertical axis which is called omega rotation so by rotating this plate the circular can be rotated along its diameter okay all these three uh, rotations combinedly can expose all the possible lattice planes inside the sample to this incoming x-rays so through this rotation the incoming x-ray or diffracted x-rays can be detected using a proper x-ray detector right so this is the most modern x-ray diffractometer and the signal from the counter is analyzed with pre amplifiers and amplifiers main amplifiers and electronic or mca multi-channel analyzers all those things and after all this process and analysis we will be getting spectrum like this so there might be sharp peaks for crystalline structures and we will be getting some disturbance like structures for amorphous area so each and every peak will be representing a particular lattice plane so which is represented here as triple one and here is two two zero right sorry this is two double zero and this is two two zero and triple two four double zero four two zero etc so each and every peak that is visible peak in this spectra will be representing reflections from a particular plane so in this case we have 200 or 200 as the highest peak in the material so which means that in that particular material there is uh, the prominent plane in that material is 200 and second one is uh, 220 right next Shearer equation which is used for finding out the crystallite size inside the uh, polycrystalline material or domain size in the polycrystalline material or even say in the case of powder diffraction we will be discussing about or we will be considering about the average size of the granules so t is actually representing the size of the crystallite and c is called the shape factor which depends on uh, the uh, arrangement of the apparatus and lambda is the wavelength of light used and b is the full width at half maxima right full width at half maximum of the uh, spectrum or peak right full width at half maximum of the peak fwhm is called full width at half maxima and here we have two things that is bm as well as bs so bs represents the peak width or this thing full width at half maximum for standard sample and bm is that of our sample so we'll be using a standard and a sample 
right and the value of the shape factor is usually about uh, 0.8 to 1.39 and we usually take it as unity so in some times or some equations the value of c is taken as unity so that c can be omitted right so this is the Shearer equation and which is uh, used for finding out the mean size of the crystallite okay so next is structure factor and form factor so as you can see here the structure factor is actually is the representation of the resultant wave scattered by all the atoms of a unit cell that means it is the mathematical is actually a mathematical uh, representation of the amplitude and phase of the wave that is being diffracted from the crystal okay so all the planes are diffracting the wave out so it is the sum total of all the diffracted wave right and the structure factor is independent of the shape and size of the unit cell but it is depending on the position of the atoms or ions inside the unit cell right Another factor is form factor, which is actually the effectiveness of the crystal to scatter X-ray. Right? This is the total sum of or total representation of scattered or diffracted waves. And, and form factor is actually the effectiveness of scattering X-rays. So it actually or the scattering factor depends on various uh, number of parameters. Examples are the Bragg angle, the wavelength and uh, the number of electrons or the density of electron cloud around the atom so it depends on many factors uh, some examples are these Bragg angle wavelength and number of electrons around an atom or we can see the density of electron cloud around an atom next we will be using Ritual method or we will be discussing about Ritual method it is actually used for refining structure of this XRD pattern right so uh, larger and less symmetrical structures have more peak overlap and it is difficult to accurately extract the peak intensities so if a material has uh, two so closely placed peaks if they overlap it is very difficult to uh, interpret the pattern so Ritterweld analysis is a technique that has been developed for solving or refining the crystal structures from powder diffraction data. So as we said earlier, in the case of powder diffraction data or powder diffraction, all possible crystallized structures are being considered. So here also, uh, major possibility of overlapping peaks. So it involves an interpretation of the peak positions and intensities using a trial structure so this is how the method works it takes a trial structure and calculates a powder diffraction profile okay we will be considering a trial structure which might be a hypothetical one or a standard one it can be anything so we will be calculating or all the parameters will be known for that trial structure because it is it might be a hypothetical one or a standard one and the diffraction profile and it compares it to the measured profile so the trial structure is modified by changing various refinable parameters like atomic positions thermal parameter uh, parameters site occupancy peak shape parameters etc until a best fit match with the observed occurs so we can represent mathematically the measured value or the actual value will be sum over i W i this where W i is the weightage factor for ith measurement y observed minus y theoretical by c the whole square. So you'll be finding out the expectation values for this quantity y observed minus y theoretical by c or the whole square and multiplied with corresponding weightage factor. Okay, W i is the weightage factor. So if the overlapping is very complex so large amount of peak overlap requires analyzing of overall line profiles so total line profile has to be checked whether <coughs> where each allowed reflections are given convolutions okay so least square fitting like methods will be con uh, convoluting using Lorentzian or Gaussian profiles and we'll be getting a best fitting profile for the observed value
so this is called Ritterveld refinement method next discussing about the applications of XRD so XRD is mainly used or it can be used for finding out the crystallinity of a material as you can see uh, as you can compare these two images the first image actually represents an amorphous material uh, while the second one represents crystalline structure so difference is very obvious that amorphous will not be having a proper peak will be having distances uh, different uh, sorry disturbances like structures on the throughout the spectra with some ups and downs but in the case of a perfect crystalline structure the peaks will be so narrow as you can see here it is a single line itself so the peaks are so narrow and properly positioned with proper intensities so that the amorphous and crystalline can be uh, refined or find out right so by seeing the XRD pattern, we can directly say whether it is a crystalline structure or an amorphous structure. In the case of amorphous, there will not be a properly defined peak. Peaks are very broad. And in this crystalline structure, the peaks will be so narrow that it, will be, it can be a line itself. So sharp peaks are obtained from crystalline materials, while broad peaks are obtained from amorphous. So defects in the crystal can give rise to in low intensity scattering between black peaks this is termed as diffuse scattering right point defects or thermal vibrations or partial ordering in the crystal can give rise to low intensity scattering right intensity might be lower than the expected value that is called diffuse scattering second application is to find out the lat lattice type okay we can identify the type of lattice which is inside the material by analyzing the positions of the peaks and also if their intensity represents the motif right so some examples are given here we have been having simple cubic structure body centered cubic and face centered and edge centered or end centered cubic structures for these this might be or these are the conditions which obeys the uh, Bragg's law as well as there is a possibility of occurring inside the peak so in the case of a simple cubic structure all possible values of hkl are causing reflections because there is only lattice points or motif at the uh, corners of the cube so all type of miller indices or all hkl planes will be present inside simple cubic structure and all can reflect the incoming x-rays but in the case of body centered, the presence of extra atom at the center can cause uh, some missing of reflection peaks or systematic absences. So in the case of a body structured or body centered cube, the H K L sum, uh, sum should be even for a peak to be occurred. But in the case of H plus K plus L odd numbers, that reflections will not be present in there. And in the case of phase centered case, HK and L should be unmixed. That means either HKL should be all even or all odd. Mixed cases will be absent in the spectra. And in the case of edge centered, H or K or any two will be unmixed. Right? Centering along L index. That is in the case of HKL Miller indices, if it uh, the atoms or are along the z axis or the third axis other two indices should be unmixed that means hk and h and k should be even or all odd in the case of centering along l index that means if the centering is or presence of particles is along z axis but in the case of x axis k and l should be unmixed Okay, all others will be absent. And as you can see here, cubic close packing is similar to face centered close packing. So same will be here also. But in the case of DC, diamond cubic structure, that means if there are particles or atoms in the voids, voids of uh, the crystal, either HKL or all odd or all even and 
HKL divisible by 4 will be present inside the uh, XRD spectrum of the material. Right? So, they should be unmixed or divisible by 4. These two conditions will be uh, use, uh, will be allowed reflections in the case of DC crystal that is diamond cubic structure that means uh, different tetrahedral structures uh, stacked with uh, each other forming a cubic structure that is called diamond cubic crystals. So this shows all the possible or allowed reflections in the case of different crystal structures as you can see the here the simple cubic structure which allows all the possible reflections except here you can see for 7 there are no reflections at all this is because we are indexing the peaks depending on the values of h, uh, h square plus k square plus l square so for getting 1 we can have 1 double zero planes so if uh, that interplanar distance and Brax diffraction obeys the values of h square plus k square plus l square equal to be 1, we can have the reflections from 1, 0, 0 set of planes. That means it can be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 and all the negative things. Okay. The combination of 1 and 2 zeros. All those Miller indices are possible for giving reflections for h square plus k square plus l square equal to 1 and in the case of they are equal to 2 1 1 0 planes or the family of planes actually 1 1 0 is the family of planes which include 1 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 minus 1 0 1 all those things are included in the 1 0 1 1 0 plane or 1 1 0 family right so 3 will be having triple 1 and all those things so similarly there is no possibility of getting 7 or 15 or 23 for this sum right as the sum of miller uh, square of the miller indices so such reflections will be absent so there is no possible combinations of hkl which gives out h square plus k square plus l square equal to 7 so 7 15 23 are etc are absent in the spectra so as you can see here for a simple cube all possible reflections will be present in there but for FCC or CCP that is face centered cube or cubic close packing only those planes or those Miller indices which are unmixed that means either all odd or all even 0 is considered as even so all even or all odd numbers are possible but in the case of BCC as you can see here again uh, in the previous slide we have said that in the case of body centered cubes h plus k plus l should be even right so here 1 plus 1 plus 0 so it is 2 it is even 2 plus 2 uh, 0 plus 0 it is even and all those things h plus k plus l should be even in the case of bcc so all those possible reflections will be giving out its own peaks in the case of uh, XRD analysis or XRD spectra. In the case of DC that is diamond cube what we said was it should be either all odd or all even and there is a third possibility that H plus K plus L that is sum of the Miller indices should be divisible by 4. So in the case of diamond cube all odd all even all odd, all even, all odd, all these things which are divisible by 4. Okay, all odd or all even which are divisible by 4. As you can see here 3 that is all odd and it is 4, the sum is 4 and here it is 5, all odd, 4 divisible by 4 and also all even and 3 plus 3, 6 plus 1, 7, all odd. So, these are the possible reflections in this thing. Right? No mixed things will be happening in this uh, case of DC. Also, there won't be any mix up in the case of FCC. Right? It should be all odd or all even. And here also all odd, all even. And again, if the sum of the Miller indices is divisible before, that are also uh, 
possible reflections for diamond cubic structure right the next application of the xrd technique is to find out the phase transitions during thermal reactions right so this is the uh, thermal reaction of a material so while starting the thermal reaction it was having cubic uh, structure right simple cubic structure where a equal to b equal to c that means all the lattice the dimensions are same so as you can see there all the reflections will be having single lines or singlets but the first one represents the 100 plane so 100 plane is having a single kind of reflection in the case of a simple cubic structure where a equal to b equal to c but when it is heated up to a some temperature it changes into tetragonal structure that is the phase is being changed from cubic to tetragonal and as you can see for tetragonal structure a equal to b that two para dimensions are same but the third one is different so there we got an extra line in the spectrum so single line for the cubic is being changed into a doublet that is two lines and again on heating we'll be getting uh, the tetragonal transforms to orthorhombic structure where all the three parameters are different so we got three different lines or a triplet corresponding to different different dimensions here we have two dimensions a equal to b so which is same and another dimension is c so we got a doublet here here as the same is in the case of here also but in the case of rhombohedral again we got a equal to b equal to c but the angles are different so being all the dimensions are same we are getting only a singlet in the spectrum so like this we by finding out in c2 xrd that means we are taking the xrd while the reaction occurring and analyzing the patterns we can clearly define the kind of structure that it is having or the phase transitions that is happening inside the material and another application is to find out the crystallite size that is the size of the domains in the case of polycrystalline material that means the size where uh, the crystal for obeys a single crystal structure that is called domain right the size and shape of the unit cell from the rotation of photographs or automatic scanning routines can uh, on the single crystal diffractometer after indexing the reflections indexing means finding out the miller indices we can examine the systematic absences and the brevis lattice and the translational symmetry elements right then intensities of the indexed reflections are measured and stored in a data file and correction factors are apply applied right and rms values and structure factors are find found out and finally the crystallite size can be calculated using the shearer equation so in order to calculate the electron density and uh, we have to we need to know the magnitude of the structure factors and the phase right so mainly we can find out the crystallite size using the shearer equation next we can find out the lattice parameter that means indexing so we can find out the value for dhkl from the bragg equation finding uh, by knowing the theta and lambda values and that can be applied for finding out the values of hkl right so interplanar distance and miller indices are derived from the xrd pattern so from the pattern we will be getting theta and versus lambda will be giving out the interplanar distance and knowing the interplanar distance we can find out the case of h and kl using the indexing that is for a particular structure there will be particular reflections allowed so by finding uh, comparing all those things we can find out the interplanar distance as well as miller indices and lattice parameters can be calculated from miller indices right by finding out miller indices a b c can be calculated uh, from that volume and all those other uh, lattice parameters can be derived finally let us put light on 
a committee or a council which are storing the data so in the late 30s these uh, scientists showed that the powder diffraction pattern could be used as an effective fingerprint for polycrystalline material regardless of whether the structure was known or unknown right so a random polycrystalline material can be analyzed using xrd and that could be used as a fingerprint method to identify the structure so a file of about 1000 common powder diffraction patterns that means standard material patterns are being collected and assembled and published in the year 1941 that was the start of a movement or start of this council joint committee for powder diffraction standards right also uh, known as jcpds values okay so the jcpds started as a thousand files but now it has more than 4 lakh 12 thousand uh, entries in the pdf so this entries are called pdf powder diffraction file so it started with thousand ones which are commonly used in all the scientific area but now it has more than 4 lakh 12 thousand entries in the pdf and this uh, pdf or powder diffraction file is administered by international center for diffraction data nowadays the committee is known as international center for powder diffraction data icdd which was previously known as joint committee for powder diffraction standards right and a computerized search and match program can be used to compare the despacing of an intensity of the recorded peaks so we can now take the xrd of any material and the pattern uh, the values from the pattern can be used or uh, can be matched with the jcpds or i can say icdd values using a computerized search match program okay thank you